Welcome to Lecture Online. Here's a very typical type of problem that can be solved using the torque concept. Here we have a gate that's being suspended by a cable at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal, and we have two hinges A and B. The gate has a mass such that the weight is equal to 400 newtons. It has dimensions one meter tall and two meters long. Now the tension in the cable is adjusted just right so that the horizontal force at A is equal to zero. There's no stress at all at hinge A in the horizontal direction, only in the vertical direction, and we assume there's going to be a force in the vertical direction at B and a force in the horizontal direction at B as well. What we're trying to find here is we're trying to find the tension in the cable, and we're trying to find these three components of the forces, the vertical component at A and the horizontal and vertical component at B. The way that's done is we're going to start with summing up the torques about some pivot point. Since we do not know anything about the forces at B, what we can do here is pick the pivot point right here at B. So we're going to take the pivot point at B and then sum up all the torques about that pivot point. By picking the point right here, we don't have to know what the force in the X direction and the force in the Y direction is at four point B there because they go right through the pivot point and that negates the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point. Same with the, the vertical direction at A that also goes to the pivot point, so we don't need to know what that is to find, so that way we can find the tension in, this, in the cable here by looking at these forces out here. The sum of the torques about B must equal zero, and what makes up the torques? Well, first of all, we have the weight of the gate, which is pulling down in this direction. That will equal the force Mg, times the perpendicular distance from the post to the center of mass of the gate that would be the halfway point that is one meter away from the pivot point. Now since that gives us a clockwise direction of the torque, clockwise is negative, that means this is equal to minus the mg times a distance of one meter which is the halfway distance from the post to the center of the gate. Now we also have the tension in the cable which would cause a counterclockwise torque, which is a positive torque, plus T times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force. Remember, tension is in this direction, and we need to find this perpendicular distance, which is this distance right here. Let's call this D. We don't have to number them. There's only one of them. Let's call that D. Now the question is, what is D equal to? Well, let's not worry about it at this stage because otherwise it gets too confusing, simply realize it's going to be plus t times d, and now we need to find out what d is equal to. I can find d by looking at this right triangle. So this would then become the right angle right here, and you can see that d is the opposite side to this angle. If this is a 30 degree angle, then this becomes a 60 degree angle. So you can see here that d, d here is the side opposite to this angle, this post distance here would be the hypotenuse. All we have to do now is find out what this vertical distance is. Let's call this distance h. Now we need to find out what h is. h can be defined as one plus this distance right here. Now how do we find this distance here? Well, this distance here, let's call this distance y. We can find distance y by looking at this triangle first. Well, this is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. We know what the adjacent side is. We don't know what the opposite side is, but we know the angle right here. So to find y, we can say that the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is y, divided by the adjacent side, which is the length of the gate, which is 2 meters, which means that y is equal to 2 times the tangent of 30 degrees. And let's find out what that is. Might as well. Where's my calculator here? It's hiding. Take 30, the tangent of 30, times 2, and that would be 1.15 meters. 1.15 meters, which means that h, which is the sum of this distance here, plus y. So that means h is equal to the height of the gate, which is 1 meter, plus y. That's equal to 1 plus 1.15, which is 2.15 meters. Now we have found the height of the post from where it's connected, where the gate is connected to B to where the cable is connected over here. Now that we have that, that would be the hypotenuse of this right triangle, which allows us to find D. 
D can be found, so D is equal to, that's the opposite side to the 60 degree angle, which is the hypotenuse, H, times the sine of the angle, 60 degrees, sine of 60 degrees. That means that this is equal to 2.15 times the sine of 60 degrees. So plus 1 equals, that's 2.15, times 60, take the sine of that, and I get 1.87 meters. So D equals 1.87 meters. And now we can find out what the tension is in the cable. Moving this to the other side and turning the equation around, we say that T times D is equal to mg times 1. Oop, too many ones there. The tension is equal to mg times 1 divided by D. Mg is equal to 400 newtons times 1 and divided by D, which we said was 1.87 newtons. The newtons cancel out. Oop, oop, oop. Hang a second, hang a second. This is not newtons, this is meters. This is meters and this is meters. So take the inverse of that and multiply the times 400. And I get 214 newtons for the tension. All right, so the hard part of this problem when trying to find the tension is to find the distance, the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the tension to the pivot point. That was the hard part. We did that right here. We did that by finding first this distance right here, call it y, and then to find the total distance, which is y plus, um, plus 1. Next, we put that in there, and we found the tension. The next thing we want to do is find the forces here at B and at A. Hmm. So to find the force at B, we could put the pivot point at A. If we find the pivot point at A, put the pivot point at A, we can find B sub X. Mm -hmm. That would be one thing. And then how do we find B sub Y and F sub uh, A sub Y and B sub Y, the force over here and the force over there? How would that be done? Hmm. We'll get to that later. Let's do the first one first. What we're going to do is find the force at B by plugging our pivot point over here. I'm going to plug my pivot point right there. I can say the sum of all the torques at A is equal to zero. So let's sum up all the torques. We have the tension here that would give us a counterclockwise motion if this was allowed to take to make to make the gate move in a circle so that would be positive torque plus the tension times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point that would be this distance here let's call that d2 we have the force of the weight of the gate that would be minus mg because that would give us a clockwise torque multiply times the distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is going to be one meter, half the length of the gate. And let's see here, at A, we still have the force at B in the X direction. So that would allow us to find B sub X. That's going to cause a, well, if we assume that the force acts in this direction, that would give us a counterclockwise motion. So let's call the plus force B in the X direction times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which would be one meter here as well. Now, what if we got that wrong? What if we got the direction of the X component of the force at B wrong? What if it's actually in the other direction? Because after all, we have the cable pulling this direction, we have the weight going this direction. We may not be sure if that's the proper direction. Well, if we chose the arrow in the wrong direction, we'll get a negative answer, and that will let us know that we were wrong. So we're going to solve for F b sub x by moving these two to the other side of the equation and turning the equation around. So f of b in the x direction is equal to, moving this to the other side, we get mg. Moving this to the other side, we get minus t times d2. So the force at b in the x direction is equal to the weight, which is 400 newtons, minus the tension, and we found the tension over here, which is 214 newtons times d2. Now we need to find d2, which is this distance right here. Again, we have ourselves a triangle. 
This here is the opposite side to this angle right here, and this is the hypotenuse, which is y, and we find out what y is, y is right here. So d2 is going to be the hypotenuse y times the sine of 60 because it's the opposite side to the angle of 60 degrees. So d2 is going to be y times the sine of 60 degrees, and of course the sine of 60 degrees is 1 half, and now we know that y is equal to 1.15, so the force at b in the x direction is equal to 400 newtons minus 214 newtons times y, which is going to be 1.15 times the sine of 60 degrees. So I have 214 times 1.15 times the sine of 60, which is... Oh, wait a minute. Did I say sine of 60 equal 1 half? That was wrong, wasn't it? The sine of 60 is actually 0.866. All right, so didn't make a mistake there. I got that. That's 213.5. Uh, actually, I think rounded off, that would be 214. So we get 400 minus 214. That gives us 186. So the force at B in the X direction is a positive 186 newtons, which means that the assumed direction of the force at B is correct, it's action in this direction, which means that the weight is not counterbalanced enough by the tension in the string, so it's still torquing up against point at B, which means that B needs to push back in this direction. Now, how do we find the force at B in the Y direction and the force at A in the Y direction? Hmm. That is a little bit more difficult because we have two unknowns that fall in the same line of action. Let's go ahead and find the sum of the two first. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up all the force in the y direction. I have a little bit of space right here. Let's do that right in here. I'm going to sum up all the forces in the y direction and we know that that must equal to zero. So zero is equal to minus the weight because it's in downward direction minus 400 newtons plus the tension in the y direction, plus the tension in the y direction, plus the force at A in the y direction, plus the force at B in the y direction. And we'll take that as a unit right now because we may not be able to separate those. The tension in the y direction, okay, since we know the angle there, that would be this component of the tension. Let me use a different color for that. It would be this component, T sub y, which is equal to T, times the sine of 30 degrees, because that would be the opposite side to the angle of 30 degrees right here. And so we have zero is equal to minus 400 plus t in the y direction. Now t is 214, that would be 214 multiplied times the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees, and that is equal to one half plus force at A and force at B, like that, in the y direction. So we take 1 half of 214, so 0 is equal to 400, that's a negative, minus half of that, that would be plus 107, because that's a positive, that's a negative, so we get minus 293, is equal to the sum of the force is equal, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, plus the force at A in the y direction plus the force at B in the y direction. So those two forces together, the force at A in the y direction plus the force at B in the y direction must add up to 293 newtons. And I don't know if we can separate those two. I'll have to think about that for a moment, but let's assume that we are complete here, that we have found the tension in the, in the cable, we have, we have found the horizontal force at x, and now we have the sum of the horizontal or the vertical force at x and at y combined as 293 newtons. And that's how we solve a problem like that.